Hey, this is Joe with Grow It, Build It, and today I'm going to tell you all about New York ironweed. Ironweed is one of the best flowers for attracting large butterflies in late summer. The disc flowers appear to be small tufts of purple hair that really are just amazing at bringing in all manner of swallowtails. If you don't have any growing, you should consider adding it, as just a few of these plants will draw in numerous species of pollinators in late summer. Blooming after Leatris but before Asters, and well, this really gives my yard a lot of extra butterfly interest. And while there are many species of ironweed that have isolated or overlapping ranges in North America, I'm going to be focusing on one in particular, commonly known as New York ironweed. This will be a complete profile on this species, including the following. What is New York ironweed and why you should grow it? How to ID it, grow and care? How to grow it from seed, save the seed? Wildlife and garden uses? And then we will review. So I hope you stick with me to learn about this amazing native flower. So what is New York ironweed? New York ironweed is a perennial wildflower native to Eastern North America. Scientifically known as Vernonia novaborosensis, it can reach heights of five to eight feet tall, Blooming pink to dark purple blooms in late summer to early fall for roughly four to eight weeks, it does a great job of attracting pollinators, particularly butterflies. I should note what it is not though. As I mentioned in the intro, there are lots of species of ironweed and they can have a lot of similarities, which can make them very tough to ID and distinguish. And this info can be important as while New York ironweed can only spread by seed, other species of ironweed can spread via rhizome root, which will be aggressive and colonize areas. I document much of this information in an article where I compare different ironweed species that I'll link to below. Why you should grow New York ironweed. Beauty. Mature New York ironweed plants will put on a showy display of color in late summer. The individual blooms are interesting and beautiful by themselves, but the numerous florets give a powerful effect. Sort of like uh, now you can see the forest instead of the trees. But the dark green foliage also generally looks attractive all season long and standing tall as a century. And when I say standing tall, I mean it. Ironweed, New York ironweed generally seems to stay erect even if it has some irregular lighting. My plants get sun from the east and the south, but not the west. Nonetheless, my plants seem to always be straight up. They don't seem to lean or flop. Butterflies. So I'm just gonna come out and say this as directly as I can. New York ironweed is easily one of the best attractors of butterflies to my yard. And I'm not just talking about little skippers like this one. There is something about these purple blooms that just bring in large swallowtails and monarchs. And they're not just here and gone. When they arrive, they tend to stay for 15 to 30 minutes, so you can observe them a long time. I don't know exactly why it's like that, but I just embrace it. Birds. New York ironweed seed heads will attract various songbirds in winter, providing food for them. I can generally find evidence of birds snacking on these seeds. The stalks also tend to stay upright, only being knocked over by deer in my backyard, etc. And I always want to point out, if you guys are liking this content, please give me a thumbs up and click the like button as it really helps me out and I do greatly appreciate it. Also, this entire video does exist as a couple of articles on my website. One is a profile on this species which will mirror this info directly, so you can save that for a quick reference. The other one is a guide on all sorts of different ironweed species, comparing and contrasting them, which I will link to that below also, so you can figure out which ones are native to your area. Okay, so for characteristics, identification, and growing conditions. The stalk of New York ironweed is usually green to a reddish purple in color, with have some ridges running vertically on it, and it will generally be smooth or sparsely hairy. The leaves are alternate on the stalk, so one on one side, then you move up a bit and you have another leaf on the other side, and, and sometimes they are still pretty close, but it will be alternating like that. The shape is generally lanceolate or elliptic, and they usually grow two to six inches long with serrated margins. The margins can sometimes resemble a ripsaw cut or be very small teeth. For flowers, numerous panicles or coriums of purple flower heads will be at the end of the stems. Each little flower head is made up of 10 to 50 individual flowers, and all these flower heads combined make for an impressive display. Blooming starts in mid to late summer, and the total bloom time can be up to eight weeks with various flower heads opening and closing, but you can expect a super bloom for roughly four weeks. The root system of New York ironweed is clump forming and fibrous, but tough. 
Now I have to say, I have never dug up my plants at all, and I'm not gonna do so right now because it's February to show you, but I have had these plants in this location for four solid growing seasons. Nothing has ever spread, and I've actually had zero volunteers in that time. Now, why am I stressing this point? Well, as I said earlier, many species of ironweed do grow rhizomes. If you don't know what rhizomes are, they are underground horizontal stems that will travel far and wide sprouting new plants. Some example of plants that do this would be common milkweed, bee balm, Canadian goldenrod, which seemingly grows everywhere. But certain species of ironweed will do this as well. However, New York ironweed does not, per every reference I've ever found and by my own experience. So if you are buying seed, New York ironweed should be safe. Also, if you're foraging seed from a friend's house or your grandparents' house or something like that, make sure you ID the plant successfully possibly even digging it up in autumn to check if it's producing rhizomes because this plant can be hard to identify. You almost have to go to the bracts, the um, little scales on the back side of the flower. And again, this video does exist. There's a couple of articles on our website. And one is a profile on New York ironweed specifically. The other is a guide to many of the more common types of ironweed showing their native ranges, height, characteristics, etc. Growing conditions. For growing conditions, New York ironweed will grow best in full sun, moist to medium, moist soil that can drain. It can tolerate occasional flooding and does well near ponds, lakes, and streams. For soil textures, the texture doesn't matter as much as the moisture level. Um, it can go anything from sandy loam to clay, but you just want to make sure that it does have regular access to moisture. So you can see this massive patch here that I'm showing you is actually surrounding a small little creek. So it's happy there and it grows very well there. But medium moisture is fine as these clips show. You know, these are two different patches along roads near where I live that I just happened to see and I stopped to film them. Now it can also grow in partial sun, which is two to six hours of direct sunlight per day, but it won't get as showy and tall. And I have to say that even though all the references say don't grow it in dry conditions, it actually seems to be able to survive in those, but it's not going to look as good. The lower leaves are going to turn black and crumbly, uh, which you can see on this plant here, which is out in the middle of a slope. Growing New York ironweed from seed. New York ironweed needs to either be cold moist stratified for 60 days or to be winter sown. I have detailed videos on each of these procedures, which I will place cards in the top right and links below. But winter sowing is by far my preferred method of germinating ironweed seeds. So fill a suitable container with moist potting soil and plant your seed shallow. I like to place about three to five seeds into the soil and just press them in with my thumb. Then I'll give a light dusting of soil on top, not totally covering anything. and then I'll sprinkle a few more seeds for good measure. Place your winter sowing container in a location that gets morning sun and afternoon shade and germination will occur in the spring. This is what the seedlings look like just after germination. You can plant these out once they get a couple of sets of true leaves or you can wait and let them grow a bit more. And personally, that's what I do. I like to grow the seedlings up a bit more and then either thin or separate them into larger containers I have detailed videos on separating seedlings if you need more info, look at the card in the top right or below for a link. And you can even grow these all season and then plant them out in the fall. In fact, I do that with lots of perennials every year. It kind of helps reduce the deer pressure. Also with germinating seeds on New York ironweed, it really helps to have fresh seed that was gathered that year. You don't want to try using old seed. I've, the germination rate seems to plummet. So how to save seed. Well, saving seed from New York ironweed is really easy and really clean. Simply wait about three to four weeks after blooming and go check the seed heads. If the hairs or tufts look fuzzy and the seed head looks dry, then you can just grab the uh, flower with one hand and pull on the hairs with the other and the seed should pop right out. If they don't come out easily, then it's not ready yet and you have to wait longer. But try to save seeds by November to keep ahead of the birds. Simply just clip the seed heads off and let them dry somewhere for a day or two. Um, you're just trying to let surface moisture evaporate if there is any. Then once you're confident that's gone, put them in a sealed plastic container and into the fridge until you are ready to cold stratify or winter sow them. I found this to be incredibly important with New York ironweed. 
um, actually all species of ironweed from my experience, the seeds don't seem to retain viability very long, similar to Leotra's. So use the fridge, that will help preserve the viability longer. For wildlife, ironweed does a lot. It feeds numerous species of bees. For butterflies, well, I could keep showing more and more footage of how much they love it. But it also does host caterpillars of the American lady. And birds such as finches will also feed on the seed. So you might see some leaf damage, and that's kind of a good thing because it means other native insects are eating the plant, you know, just part of the food web. But when it comes to deer and rabbits, as I said, they really don't seem to bother established plants or older growth, but when the seedlings are young or new growth is just emerging, they are at risk. Because even though New York ironweed is listed as deer resistant, I've suffered plenty of damage on new or tender growth. So protecting them with liquid fence or planting out them out in autumn is a good idea. Liquid fence is a product you can spray the young plants with just to keep the rabbits and deer off. You got to keep up with it and follow the directions, but it really does work in my experience. I will link to liquid fence down below in the show notes. This is what ironweed looks like emerging in the spring. Uh, it emerges kind of in the middle of everything else, not too early, not too late. For garden uses, New York ironweed is great for a focal point of an open flower bed or the back of a formal flower bed due to its height. It can be used as a border garden, rain garden, wildflower meadow, or a micro prairie like I have. Uh, it really just needs to have somewhat access to moisture or medium moist soil. I mean, you can always water it too. And you want to have at least three specimens to attract the most number of butterflies. You know, they, they like to forage where there's a lot of flowers, not a little. Also, if you want to have this ironweed, but you don't want it to be too tall, you can always give it the Chelsea chop about two months before blooming in June, cutting it back to like two feet. That will make it more shrub-like and shorter, and I'll have a link below on how to do that. New York ironweed is going to grow well with any plant that likes full sun and moist soil. So some examples would be asters, like New England aster, garden phlox, blue lobelia, Joe pie weed for sure is a great companion plant. Uh, purple cone flower, tall sunflower or tall coreopsis, sneezeweed, turtlehead. Some other plants that will bloom before New York ironweed would be swamp milkweed, false sunflower, cardinal flower, and red bee balm. Okay, time to review. New York ironweed is a herbaceous perennial plant that will grow up to eight feet tall in full sun and moist to medium moist soil that drains. It does great near water or anything that won't fully dry out. Native to the eastern United States, it can attract tons of pollinators to your yard in late summer where it blooms for one to two months. And it generally stands tall. I've never seen any of these plants sprawl or flop over or even lean, really. Starting from seed isn't too hard, but it helps to have fresh seed and to winter sow it. Young seedlings should be protected from deer, but the risk of damage reduces with maturity. But that's what I've got for you in this video. If you have any questions, please ask in the comments and I will do my best to answer them. Also, if you enjoyed this video, click the like button. It really does help my channel out and I greatly appreciate it. And uh, finally, there are some references down there, a profile on this specific species, as well as other ironweeds and some other, uh, you know, helpful ones on winter sowing and cold stratifying in the fridge, that kind of stuff. But yeah, you guys all have a good day.